All right, folks, welcome back to the shop. <clears throat> Been posting a lot of videos on the, uh, a lot of drone footage here lately. And I just wanted to show you, take a few minutes to show you what I've got and mistakes I've made and the, the enormous pluses that I've made by buying this racing drone to learn on. Now, I started out buying this drone. This is a Mavic uh, 2 Pro very expensive you know just the copter is like 15 1800 and then if you buy a kit you have upwards of around three grand while it's takes great videos it was a total waste of money for for my experience it's uh, I was looking for something to get back into RC where I didn't have to look up in the sky and just do line of sight I wanted something that I could do uh, FPV first person view and that makes flying incredibly easy. Uh, the Mavic, it's basically you get it up to an altitude and you push it around the sky. All you got to do is be brave enough to get it up above the trees. But it's not very hard to fly at all. Now on the other hand, this is a, a 5 inch racing drone. And I happened to get into this just when the industry was changing. Uh, all of the FPV cameras before have been analog. So, uh, picture a 1970s TV where you got your 60 miles from the TV station and you've got a staticky picture. Well, that's pretty much what analog gives you when you're flying through goggles set on analog. Now, these just came out probably a year or so ago. And, like I said, I just happened to get into it at a perfect time. And this thing has been incredibly durable. Uh, I've impacted the ground when I first got it. Actually, the way it worked, I got two of them. Uh, I started out with this one, which was, I let the company build it. I got it from Rotor Riot. It's called the HD1. And they built it and tuned it. I added the GoPro camera on there, but basically out of the box, it was ready to go, along with the radio. So, in addition to that, I bought a kit that I could build just so I could learn how to uh, modify them and do any kind of repairs that's needed. And for the most part, it's a lot of soldering as far as real small connectors. But again, the durability of these things. This is my first experience with carbon fiber. And it is, it's everything it's lived up to be. It's extremely strong. I mean, I've just hit the kill switch at 200 feet and let it fall when it's out of control and it would impact hard and you'd barely even break a blade. And matter of fact, that is the only consumable on here with this thing is the props. Uh, you might break one or nick one up. But other than that, if you want to learn and something that's durable uh, that can take some crashes, get your racing drone because they're made out of carbon fiber and they're the way to go. Again, I'm not putting down on a Mavic Pro, it's just not for me. Uh, I'm looking for something that this doesn't have a stabilized gimbal. I, I want to see when the aircraft rolls and tilts. Whereas on the Mavic, it's constantly, it's got a, what do you call it? It's a stabilized gimbal that the camera is on. So you never see when the quad is tilting right or left, the camera is always going to be perfectly straight. Now on these drones, <clears throat> quads, drones, whatever you want to call them, uh, one of the main reasons I got this was because the, the camera will record HD 1080, uh, 60 frames a second, and the quality is very, very good. And it will record on the goggles as well. All right, so these are the, the goggles that I use. I've put some aftermarket antennas on here just trying to get some additional range, doing some testing. But uh, <clears throat> you never have to look in the sky again. You simply put on the goggles, and you're now looking out through the front of the camera. It completely eliminates the control factor. Like when the aircraft is flying away from you, right is right, left is left. 
but an old RC, when you turn and come back to you, you had to really think about it because now your controls were reversed. Uh, that's completely eliminated with this. Your mind just sees you're constantly in the cockpit of the aircraft, so you don't even have to think about it. It's much easier than you would think as far as that uh, flying line of sight. It's, it just it comes natural. Now, with that being said, something I've discovered is the camera and everything is running from the same battery that supplies power to the entire rig. What that means is when you're getting low on battery or you're in an area that doesn't have as much power, first thing that goes out is the video. It either goes pixelated and with high def video, you don't get any static. You get a little pixelating and then the camera just drops out. So for that reason, I've just recently added uh, one of these action cams or a GoPro, whatever. This is a cross track, I think is the name of that camera. But I've just added the mount on there. That way this camera can record everything. And the payload on these quads is, is quite a bit. They're extremely powerful. So lifting a, a small camera is not an issue at all. You can hardly even tell. It doesn't affect the flight characteristics. A little bit you get a little bit shorter flight time uh, which on these high performance deals you only get about four minutes anyway if you if you're not punching it through the roof every time you fly it but here lately like I said I just got in it just a couple of months ago and I'm learning I'm, I'm every flight is getting better and I kind of get it out of my system to just get up in the air and fly around and uh, punch it out and do some flips and rolls but now I've kind of gotten everything lower to the ground and doing more precision flying. And that's where you really develop that muscle memory to where you, um, you can fly without, you know, do close encounters with a tree or, or like me with the shooting shack. Is, that's something I've been flying in between trying to just improve my skills on it. So again, the GoPro, I'm just getting in and out of just made this mod just the other day I don't even have any good footage to put up there yet but I'll put some footage on the end of this video just to show you the quality that the uh, that the camera system on here puts out and you're seeing the same output through the goggles so it's a quite a, a, a big improvement again the durability is amazing this thing has taken some severe ground pounding and hitting trees, hitting the shooting shack. It's hit just about everything out in the field that can be hit at this point. And it's maintained its durability. It's done real good. One thing I do know is that this carbon fiber is highly conductive. Uh, you've got a lot of power going through these power leads. This battery's 16.8 volts when it's charged up. I think it's 3,000 milliamp hours. So it's, it's putting out a lot of voltage. One of my leads got nicked just from rubbing up against the edge of the carbon fiber. And before you know it, it was arcing off and, and burning through. So you got to be careful because the carbon fiber is definitely conductive. So again, these drones have been incredibly durable. And for me, some folks that follow the channel know I've had some neck surgeries and uh, had a lot of issues with that. For the last couple of years been sitting around the house just feeling sorry for myself well, i gotta tell you this has really gotten me out of the house and back into something that's got me outside and moving around and i actually feel better for it uh so it's really helped out and again if you you could buy a drone for a couple hundred bucks and fly it and run into something they're plastic uh, they break then you're going to be waiting on parts if you're going to learn I would highly recommend getting a, a racing drone that's made with carbon fiber and built to take a licking and keep on ticking. And I don't think you'll be uh, displeased at all. It's been incredibly durable. And uh, again, Rotor Riot, their webpage, the folks there have been very supportive. Uh, they always send me something extra when I buy from them and have had good support. So uh, send them some business if you like. But again, if you want to get out and do a hobby that's completely different, I mean, flying through these goggles is just unreal. You're looking at 1080p, 
you know I'm gonna put some video on here and the video you see from the camera is the exact video that I'm seeing when I'm flying uh, and it doesn't take long to get good at this uh, however good is a very uh, that's very subjective there's a lot of folks out there that are absolutely great at flying these things and can thread a needle with them uh, hopefully I can be that good one day uh, that's what I'm striving for right now but it's all about getting the good camera shot for me so I'm always trying something different I'm almost to the point where I'm ready to go to a different location and start you know flying some some bandos or something that's a, an abandoned area building or water tower and what you do you fly around it and dive down it it makes for some very good footage okay so I'm gonna tag on the end of this um, some footage we'll, we'll just put yesterday's flight up there I try to fly about 30 minutes a day in the afternoon at that golden hour when the sun's hitting the treetops and stuff but yesterday it was very gloomy so it won't be that bright but you'll get an idea what I'm doing with these quads alright here we go
the matter? Huh? What? Something wrong? <coughs> you want me to follow you? <coughs> what is it? Is it an emergency? <coughs> Something wrong? <coughs> Wait, is, is Timmy stuck in a well? See? <coughs> is Timmy stuck in a well? <coughs> he is? <coughs> Where's he at? <coughs> well, let's go. Come on, let's go follow him. Come on, let's go find him. Timmy's stuck in a well. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Alright, here we go. You sure? Wait, I don't know. It's pretty dark. I don't know if I want to go. You sure? No, no, no. What? It's dark out there, Zeke. But you sure? He's stuck in a well. Timmy. No. Alright, let's go. Come on. Let's go then. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, here we go.